indeed. Glory to God. Oh, I'm glad hell off to another one. Woo! Nobody has to go to hell. Did you know that? If you go out, if you go to hell, it'll be your choice. Amen. God's done everything he can do to keep you out of hell. He didn't even prepare hell for you. He did for the devil. Did for the devil and his angels. And the devil deserves every bit of it. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. We love you. So good to see you. I want to say thank you for backing up our last Sunday services. Thank God. You know, you prayed. I got you guys to pray. While our church folks was praying starting last Wednesday week ago that uh, you know, we'd have a good congregation show up and good things would happen. And uh, praise God they did. And I thank you for all that you've done. Praise God. Got several people on the prayer list today. Junior Phoenix, we want to pray for him the day before this service is ended. Uh, he's got a report that we don't like to hear. But we know God can still work miracles, can he? So we're going to anoint him as all pray for him here toward the end of the service today. Talk to Sister Betty Phoenix. She's still in rehab. Uh, let's keep praying for her. She wanted me to tell you she loved every one of you. She can't wait until she can get uh, uh, motivating a little bit now. She, you know, broke a leg and it's a pretty bad break, I understand. And they're trying to take her to rehab to get to where she can, you know, get around again. Also, Cindy Johnson, she's the lady that uh, sang for us a couple of times as the four kids that sings with her. She's uh, on her way to Nashville today. She's going to have a surgery tomorrow. She's been diagnosed with breast, breast cancer. So let's pray for her today, okay? They'll have a safe trip down and then uh, this surgery will be a, a successful surgery. Amen. That cancer will be taken care of in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. How many has a prayer meet that only God can meet? Hallelujah. You know you're in a good place. He said, one, two, or three, one, two, or three, again, there I am. Amen. Just close your eyes and just do your hands like that a little bit. Do both of them. I got a microphone one this when you're doing that, you're running your fingers through the presence of God. Oh, Lord, I'm not. Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the presence of God is in this place. Oh, he's in you, but he, yet he's all around you. <laughs> Woo! Praise be unto God. Let's pray. Would you, Father, every name is on the prayer list today. Every name, every need, God, you love us so much. You love us so much, God. You don't let anything slip by you. God, you know it. You already know it all. You already know the ending even before the beginning. God, today we pray over those that need that touch today. God, let this be today. Let this be today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amanda is telling me she wants to get the Holy Ghost. Amanda, this is a good day to get it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. He's always around you. Always around you. Praise God. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Before we get back into worship, let me uh, bring you up to date. Uh, let me ask you if it's all possible at all. Could you uh, go ahead and turn your money in on our feeding ministry project? We'd like to have it uh, all in by uh, first next month. We've got one more Sunday this month. And if you could, go ahead and turn it in. Uh, I think we're about one-third of the way uh, of our goal. So if you could, uh, you know, we're just looking for 100 people, give us $100. And uh, we've had some people that uh, did that 10 times. And one person did it five times. And some, I noticed some that's the pledge to do it five times. So uh, it's all working. And if you, you know, give what you can, that's all we ask. Do what you can. And uh, we need to get the money in so we can order it. We have to put an order in for them to make it with all the specs that they want uh, done in it. Okay? All right, how many of you think, praise the Lord, it's going to happen? It's going to happen, praise God. Amen. One more announcement, we'll get back to praise 
uh, tonight, tonight service, you know, there's five Sundays in this month and five Sundays in October, five Sundays in December. But uh, a few months ago, we had an all-sing service. Everybody that wanted to sing could sing. Uh, if there's a, du a duet, you can sing two songs. But everybody wants to sing. Uh, and maybe you've been wanting to sing and just hadn't had a chance. Well, tonight's your chance. Come on back tonight, 6 o'clock, and we'll have a singing and testimony service. Uh, maybe you've got a poem you'd like to read, but uh, what are you doing? I'm trying to involve everybody that wants to be involved. Praise God. Amen. Did you know if you don't use them, you lose them? Yeah. That's right. If you don't use them, you lose them. So come back tonight. We'll have a great time looking for you to be here. Let's love God today and let Him have His way, okay? Praise God. Glory to God. Hey, I want to bring on the feeding ministry. Though. They did a great job yesterday. We had about 80 people. We had about 80 people. Had at least 80 people. Yeah, we never had a drop of Gatorade. Didn't have a drop of Gatorade. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate everything that you all do. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Thank you for what you put your money in here. Feeding ministry money. God uses that. And Sam's Club keeps plenty of Gatorade. Get some when you're over there, okay? God bless you. We love you. Let's worship God now. Amen. In prisoners' chains.
sick today. Becky Saunders, uh, her mother that's in her home with hospice. Is that right? Okay. And uh, we need to pray for Becky, pray for the family. Lots, a lot of things going on. God needs to do anything for it. Okay? Did you believe God with us? Amen. God knows how to do everything, doesn't he? Yes. Amen. When God gets in it, it all goes right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we pray. We pray for your power. We pray for the Holy Spirit. God, to visit that home. God, to touch Becky. Almighty God, you know her name. Father, physically, she needs a touch. Mentally, God, she needs a touch. Spiritually, she needs a touch. Oh, God, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we, you said call on me. And you answer us, oh God. We yes. thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. One more song. Brother Jason's going to come. He's got a message for you today. Under him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Who are we talking about? Under him. Who's him?
said he'd never leave me. He said he'd never forsake me. Why can't he be happy in times of turmoil, in times of trouble? Amen. Because God is with you. Amen. If God is with you and if God is for you, amen, then who can be against you? Praise God. Oh, we praise you today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
lifting my big hallelujah this morning. Somebody give me a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Remain standing if you have your Bibles. Have your way in this house today. Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God. The Spirit of God is moving. He's moving all over this land. Praise God. Just say, Lord, move on me. Or he's got like a little plant that's needing rain. That open up. Brother McGuire told us last Sunday night, said he could smell rain. I mean, even the atmosphere, the plants, they know when it's going to rain. Old timers used to know they could walk outside and they go, I smell rain. <laughs> I don't know about you this morning, but I smell some rain. Yeah. And that time of refreshing shall come from the presence of God. Lord, refresh your people today. Here we are in July. And then this is, this is half the year. It's almost gone. That's amazing, isn't it? Goodness gracious. Boy, hasn't it flown by? Hasn't it flown by? Here we are at halftime. Hey, Amen. And God. Got something good for you. And then in halftime, you play football or you play a sport. Halftime, you get in there and you get your air back. You get you a drink of good old Gatorade or water or whatever it is. And you get ready to go after it again. Amen. That's what I'm asking God to do for us here today. Amen. Is refresh us, fire us up. Amen. And we're going to finish strong. Amen. The last part of this year. Hallelujah. Praise God. Turn to your Bibles to Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Read out of the New King James Verse. Mark, have it on the screen for us. Yes, amen. Praise God. The Bible says that Jesus came and spoke to them. Not just any man came, but Jesus came. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, what did he say? All authority. Some authority. All authority, he said, is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Praise God. Jesus spoke to them, saying, and he ended up, he told us, he said, Go into all the world, tell the world about me. And I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you in the good times. I'm going to be with you in the bad times. I'm going to be with you when you're born. I'm going to be with you when you take your last breath on this earth. Then I'll be waiting for you there on the other side to take your hand and enter into where you're going to spend eternity. He will be with us all the way to the end. 
And I thought about a title of this message this morning. I just want to encourage you today. And I, I want to tell you, I want to come before you in this crazy world that we're living in. I want you to know that the deal is still on. The deal is still on. Praise God. Amen. Would you stretch your hands and pray for me this morning? Father, we love you and we praise you. God, I feel your touch on me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God, I thank you. Glory to God. I can't do this without you. It's not by my or by power, but it's by your spirit. It's by your anointing. Your anointing makes a difference. Your anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. Praise God. We praise you today. And I thank you, God, for your goodness. I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you, God, for your touch. Lord, touch every heart. Touch every person. God, encourage us. You've laid before us a plan, and we're part of that plan, and it has not changed. It will not change, and you're going to carry us all the way home. And we praise you for that. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God as you're seated, and to look at your neighbor, and tell him, say, my goodness, you're looking good today. divine power has been bestowed on us. Absolutely. Look at your neighbor and say, absolutely. If there's ever a question in your mind, is the power of God with you? And has it been bestowed upon you? Absolutely. Without a doubt, there's not a question. Everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through true and personal knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. I want you to know this morning that you've got what it takes to accomplish whatever God has called you to do. Tri-Cities Church of God, we have all we need to accomplish all that God has called us to do. Our pastor has told us from the beginning of the year, 2023, we want to be all that we can be. And I'm telling you, you've got what it takes to be all that you can be. God is with you. All you've got to do is step out by faith. Amen. The check is already been written. It's already been signed. Amen. By God in heaven. He signed it with the blood the check has been written, paid in full. All it's waiting for you to do is by faith to step out, pick it up, take it, amen, and say, it's mine, thank you, Lord, we praise you. The devil has been defeated. God is exalted. Jesus is Lord in this house, in your house, praise God, in your life, in your family, praise God, he is Lord of all today. Because he's out roaring like, like a going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Don't believe the lie. Because you're facing, you're thinking in your mind and we all are going through things. We all are facing opposition. Let me tell you something. Thieves don't break, break into broken down cars. Cars that won't run. 
thieves don't break in the empty houses. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the reason why he's beating on your door, the reason why he's trying to wreck havoc in your family, because he sees riches in you. He sees the value in you. He sees and knows what God has placed in you. And it's a very valuable thing, the gift and the calling of God that is on your life to be a powerhouse for Him in these last days. It's no accident that you were born and that at this very moment, at this very time, it's not a just happenstance that God has called you and placed you here because He wants to do something fat, fabulous in your life. He wants to do something fantastic, amen, in your family. He wants to bring revival all around you in your community and your people's lives to be touched and changed by the power of God. You're facing opposition because the enemy sees the value in you. Don't think it's strange. We think destruction. You talk to people all the time and they're saying, Oh, Lord, my life's falling apart. We think destruction, but God says and sees development. We go through rough issues and hard times and storms, and we tend to feel like this is all going to fall apart. But I'm telling you, it's not falling apart. It's falling into place. Man, it's falling into place. What's going on in your life? Keep your hand in the hand of the man that has never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he loves you. And he's got you right in the palm of his hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's ask Joseph. Joseph, the man in the Old Testament. The Bible tells us that God was with him. But he found himself in a pit. He found himself in a prison. All along, the Bible kept saying, God was with him. Jonah, the prophet, tried to run from God. Tried to get away from the calling of God. But the Bible says that God prepared a storm. God prepared a fish. God prepared a tree. And then God prepared and sent a worm to eat the tree down. God was working. God was moving all the time. God was involved in Jonah's life. Jonah went on and preached. And then a great revival and the whole city was turned upside down, right side up and was spared. David was sent a lion, a baby. And then he faced the giant. Moses wrestled 40 years on the backside of a desert, hiding out. But God was developing him. No doubt he was thinking, I'm nothing. I'll never be anything. Just hiding out. I stutter. I can't speak well. Just need to stay here and take care of the sheep. But one day, Man, as he was walking, there was a bush that was burning. And no, there's no doubt, no telling how long that it had been burning. But finally, one day, the Bible says that Moses turned. He turned and looked. And then, aren't you glad one day, whatever it was, when God was speaking to you, and then that you finally stopped in your tracks and stopped and turned and listened to the voice of God. Have you come? together and say it to the Lord. I'll take your sins though they're like scarlet. I'll take them though they're dark and dirty and I'll wash you and cleanse you and change your life and turn your life around. Aren't you glad you turned and looked toward Him? And that's what happened for Moses when he turned and looked towards that bush God spoke to him. Abraham was promised years in advance that he would be a father of many nations. But he wrestled with going through waiting and time and waiting and waiting and waiting till it got totally impossible. And he was a hundred years old. God blessed him with his son. Job was devastated. Lost. 
his family, lost all of his goods, lost all of his money, lost everything that he had, lost his health to the point to where his wife looked at him and said, do yourself a favor and everybody else and just curse God and die. But instead, Job said, honey, you talk like a foolish woman. God is the only help that I have or ever will have. And I will not curse God and die. No, he slayed me, yet will I bless him. I will bless him and live. And Job was restored. Everything was restored to him. John, the apostle, was bold in oil, exiled with all the patents, but there he was given the revelation. Peter's failures. He felt like quitting. He had failed miserably. But Jesus came to him and said, Hey, Peter, your failures are not fine. I've got a calling for your life. Now listen, go and feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do the work of the ministry. I've got a calling on your life. And that same failure on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says nobody else stood up but Peter, this failure. He stood up and he said, I know what's going on. Let me tell you what's happening. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and sons and daughters are going to prophesy. And all of a sudden, 3,000 people were saved and brought into the kingdom that day. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what you're going through. It's not there to destroy you, but it's there to develop you. Paul the Apostle was beaten, prisoned, stoned, shipwrecked, snake bitten, all by being used by God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the questions, amen, that people around him might have said, Paul, are you sure? Are you sure you heard from God on this? Are you sure? He was sure. He said, I know. He didn't say, I think of that. Or I wish I did. He said, I know in whom I have believed. And I am fully persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed out of him. Praise God, I'm telling you, he knew. And then God worked in him and through him. And he went on. Amen. To tell and tell his, his spiritual son Tim, Timothy. Amen. That yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. You will suffer some things. You will go through some things. Jesus said that in this life you will have tribulation, but he said, get your chin up. Get your head up. Amen. Put a smile on your face. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, for we are his workmanship. Under construction. It's the way I like to read it. I preached a message years ago. I had a caution tape and every hard hat and all kinds of things up here. And then because we're under construction. You ever been on the construction site? You ever seen the construction site? And it is, it is messy. There's a picture somewhere of a finished project that's happening. Amen. But when you walk on the construction site, there's noise, there's beating, there's bang, there's dust, there's dirt, there's mud, there's rock, there's gravel. Everything that you look at, you're thinking, how can this ever be that? Here's the picture of what it's going to be, but right now, man, it's a mess. But all of a sudden, when things come, all the work's been done, you see the finished project. We're under construction. Sometimes we are dusty and dirty and messy. Amen. Rocks and gravel and all kinds of messed up things in our life, but you're under construction. You are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good work which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Listen, church, today, I truly believe people like us are getting burdened with thinking about what's going on in our nation, 
If you're not careful, you'll become discouraged. If you're not careful, you'll become despondent. If you're not careful, you'll begin to get the idea and just think, I believe more now than ever that Jesus is coming back. And He's about to split the sky and rapture His church. But He's given us a commandment. He's given us a call. He's told us, occupy until I come. Don't lay down and quit. Don't be discouraged. But go out and reach those that are hurting. Go out and get the prisoners and bring them in and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. Let them see what's going on in your life. Though you may be in trouble. Though you may be hurting. And then don't waste your pain. What you're going through. I know I can't, I can't explain why we have to go through things we have to go through. I can't explain that. I don't understand why God allows bad things to happen to good people. I can't answer that question. All you can do is think about it just for a moment. You think about Paul and Silas. What were they doing? Were they doing bad? Were they doing horrible things? No, not at all. They were preaching the gospel. I mean, they delivered a girl that was demonically oppressed. I mean, and all of a sudden, they threw them not just in jail, not just in a little county jail somewhere. The Bible says they put them in an inner prison, in the worst possible place that you could be put. And put them and fasten their feet in stocks. Can you just see them against the wall? They're holding Silas, looking at Paul and saying, Paul, are you sure that you heard from God on these? Because this doesn't make any sense. And Paul just simply looked at him and he said, Hey, amen, let's begin to praise God. Let's just begin to worship God. Let's begin to worship God. And what happened in that Acts 16? What happened there? The Bible says as they begin to pray and begin to sing praises unto God that the prisoners heard them. I'm telling you, one of the prisoners that are around your life, the prisoners that you work with, the prisoners that you see at Walmart, the prisoners that you go in and out of every day, of every day life, people that are in bondage, people that are hurting, they're looking at you. They're looking at what you're going to do in your situation. And are you going to buckle and just fold up and just tell them, say, well, I get that. it wasn't real anyway. Look at it. They just, no, no, no. You're looking. You're watching. Amen. They're watching other people. I remember, amen, in my life as a young boy, amen, I, Sister Renee, you know, I watched your dad. Oh, I watched him go through. Unbelievable. It was the best, one of the best men I believe I've ever met in my life. Bill Blevins. He's top notch. I mean, I'm most positive. I mean, he was a preacher's friend. He was a preacher's friend. I mean, I'm telling you, I know. When I first, I, and I still do, but when I first started preaching, I can't imagine how hard, how hard it was to listen to. I can't even imagine. I couldn't even listen to my own self. I mean, I just, you know, they recorded, I'd start to listen to them, and I'd just say, oh, Lord, have mercy of God, you've got to help me. You've got to help me, my brother Blevins. And then it didn't matter. He'd come up to me. And he, he'd encourage me. He'd put his arm around me. He'd say, you keep on preaching. You keep on going. You just keep on preaching the Word of God. But I, I, and I watched him. His precious wife, Sister Pat, she suffered through sickness, through all the things. And I kept my eye on him. And then he'd come in dressed up every Sunday morning. He come walking in, his shoulders back, and his chin lifted with victory on his lips. Praise God. And I think to myself, how in the world? How in the world? All he's going through, all he's not watching him. And then his prison, what was he doing? He was praising God. He was worshiping God. He was, made, he was doing what God, and he didn't, surely he questioned, they get God. Why do things have to be like they are? And he kept on believing, kept on trusting God. Made a difference in my life. Made a difference in your life. Amen. God is calling us. Whatever your pain may be today, don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. I look at Terry and Cindy here this morning. 
I've said it before, but it, it, it encourages me when I see Terry walking around with his hands lifted, praising God, because I know that's not coming out of all the time rejoicing. I know it's coming from God. I don't know if I can make another step, but I'm going to praise you. I'm going to ask you for strength to carry me because I don't know if I can walk another step. I know it's coming from the cross. It's coming from a prison sometimes. It's always coming from the best place. But I'm telling you, God is right there. God is working. And whatever you're going through today, you keep going. Whatever you're up against today, you keep on fighting. You keep on holding on to the hand. Amen. And will never let you go. Praise God. God is faithful. God is faithful. We look to our society today. We look what we've been through in the last three years. We see the enemies trying to destroy God's people. We look at our world today and I think about it. I, just, I, I, I don't want to be negative here this morning. I don't want to, don't want to sound like gloom and doom, but I, I'm just amazed because I never dreamed when I preached on New Year's to New Year's Sundays and I began to tell us we're going places. God's going to take us places we've never been. And then get ready. Joshua told his people, this way we're going is a way that you've never been before. And I, and I, was, I was excited and I, I didn't all know what it had to entail, but I knew that God was taking us on a journey. And I think about how quick, how quick things Amen. From January to July, I never dreamed that, that I'd have discussions and talk about things that we've had to talk about. Amen. Around the coffee table and around the, the house and in the car with my wife and with my kids and the, the discussions that we've had to have. Amen. I this world, amen, is, is, is us unreal what we're facing and what we're seeing in this country. Something, amen, is broken. Hosea the prophet in chapter 10 verses 12 through 14. Listen to this. He says, Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. <coughs> Till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Here's what we've seen going on. Here's what's been happening. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Because you trusted in your own way. In the multitudes of your mighty men. Therefore, told, amen, shall rise among your people. And all your fortresses shall be plundered. A shout and plunder bed our bell in the day of battle. A mother dashed in pieces upon her children. I'm telling you what was happening, what was going on. Amen. He was prophesying into a people. Amen. That had turned their back on God and turned their, their hearts away from God. And he was saying, You're reaping. And then you sow to the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. And then we're looking and we're watching in our country. And we're seeing things that we've never seen before. And then the psalmist said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Right. And Psalms 9, 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. If we as a nation, we forget God, the hell that we're seeing, and the things that we're seeing going on in our country are only going to get worse. But our hearts, it's time, as Hosea said, hey, it's time to wake up. Hey, it's time to do something. What we need to do, it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to call on the name of the Lord. It's time, amen, to lift our eyes, lift our hearts, lift our hands, amen, to the place that we can only get our help. The help is going to come, and it's going to come.
down from God. Praise, Praise God. God. We can't continue going in the direction we're going. In the book of Nehemiah, we see a place. We see in a situation where the walls have been broken. The gates were torn down. The walls to his city were broken. Nehemiah's heart was broken because of that. And I'm telling you, there's some walls broken in this country. There's some walls broken in our community. And we need to get a burden. We need to get a burden in our heart. We need to pray, God, burden us again to where we begin to pray, where we begin to seek the face of God. And then he still tells, it's not, it's not Washington, D.C.'s, amen, issue. It's not, it's not politicians, amen, that are going to make a difference. The Bible still says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek the face of God, that's what's going to fix our problem. That's what's going to fix our brokenness. Praise God is a humble people seeking the face of God, calling upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Moral breakdown in our country. When the city's gates are torn down, when the border is wide open, that means everyone can come in. There's no protection. There's no watchman. Nobody checking. Evil runs wild when it's not checked. Look how far we came this year. Look how things have digressed. I know you've talked about it. I know you've been going through it. I know you've seen the things where you shake your head and think, how can this be? We just visited our, my daughter and son-in-law down in Columbia, Mississippi. Air Force Base there. Listen, you don't just walk in there. It's fortified. It's walled off. It's gated. And you don't just step in there and praise on in like you own the place. There's a big old, everything's waiting for you when you pull your car in. Man, if you don't have the right information, you don't get in. And they don't mess with you. If you don't have the right stuff, you don't have the right credentials, you don't come in. Because it's protected. We need, to be, we need to begin to understand how we need that. Amen. In our lives, God, when things have broken down and the only way it's going to be put back, amen, is for us to get a burden to begin to pray and begin to cry out to God. But listen, I don't want to leave you feeling hopeless this morning. Let me hurt. Then I said to them, this is Nehemiah talking. You see the distress we're in. Nehemiah 2, 17 and 18. He says, you see the distress we're in. You ever feel like you're in some distress? How Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. He said, come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them, hallelujah. I'm telling you today, listen. Listen to this preacher today. Don't listen to Jason, but listen to the Holy Spirit speaking through me and telling you, here's what he's saying. I'm telling you today that the hand of my God, oh, which has been good upon me, and also of the King's words that he has spoken to me, so that they said, let us arise up and build. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Then they set their hands to do this good work. I'm telling you, the deal, I told you this morning already, the deal is still on. And the same God that spoke to Nehemiah is the same God, amen, that stood there as he was, Jesus was being, and then he was taken up, and then he, before he left, he said, let me tell you, go in you therefore in all the world. I've got a work for you to do. Pray God, though everything may be falling and crumbling around you, I'm going to be with you. My good hand will be up on you. God has got a good hand. 
And His good hand is upon us today. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, God's good hand is upon me. Though we have a moral breakdown in our country, abortion has ran rampant since 1973. Those 60 million babies have been aborted since that time. Sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman. Transgender issues. Confusion to warp the minds of the next generation. Telling you that you should let your third grader, second grader, decide whether he's a boy or a girl. Don't say nothing to them. Don't tell them which bathroom to use. Don't just let them decide all that on their own. That's ludicrous. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's demonic. Confusion. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And we need to speak and we need to stand up against it. God created all of us. And He created you male or female. There's only two. There's not a bunch. There's not a group. You're either one or the other. There's no use to even argue that point. It's, I don't understand that. It's craziness. It's craziness that is going on. We're living in that world today. Walls are broken down. Deceptions and lies. But I want you to know that the enemy will not win. I got great news. He's already defeated. He's already defeated. He will not win. But God's left us here to occupy. To occupy. That's what He's saying to you. This, we've been, it's been leased out to mankind. It's the church. That's why today, the local church, this is the most important place in the world today. We want to see change in our community. We want to see change in our city. We want to see change, amen, in our state. We want to see change in our country. It's going to start right here. Praise God with you and with me. That's where we'll start. Revival is going to start with you. Amen. Revival is not going to come, somebody coming in, preaching and all. It's going to start in your heart, in your life. It's going to start with a burden saying, God, we need you. I need your help. Nehemiah said, rise and build. For God will help us. And His good hand is upon us. In Judges chapter 2, verse 10, listen to this, we, 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 this can't happen on our watch. Look at your neighbor and say, this is what we're going to read here. It can, it's not going to happen on our watch. It's not going to happen on our watch. When all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, which means the former generation had died. That's what that means. Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which He had done for Israel. Tri-Cities Church of God, there's people coming behind us. Right. There's young people in this back row back here. Young people here. Young people here. <laughs> young people right here. Amen. <laughs> young as Mark. <laughs> we can't quit. Because the generation coming behind us, they cannot be said. That they rose up, they didn't know God. They didn't know who God was. Arise and build, Nehemiah said. For God's good hand is upon us. How are we going to do it? I'm going to end with this right here, this one verse. How are we going to do it? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 through 5. 
Timothy was preaching in a hell hole. We think what we're living in was bad. Where Timothy was preaching was a cakewalk compared. What we're living in is a cakewalk compared to what he was preaching in. It was horrible. All types of sexual sin. All types of people doing whatever they wanted to do. All that was going on. He was just a young preacher. Paul said, Timothy, I'm sure he was questioned, Paul, how am I going to do this in this horrible place? He said, Timothy, preach the word. Hallelujah. God's 
telling us that we're here to make a difference. We're here maybe to realize that there is a problem, but the problem's fixable. It's fixable. But it's not going to just happen because we hope it does. We're going to have to pray. We're going to have to seek the Lord. Call on His name. Call up to God. Call out to God. Cry out to God. Get a burden in our hearts and in our lives. Put skippy the dog through. You know, like playing the fiddle player on the Titanic. He just can't play the music. Guess what? The ship was sinking. Throw your fiddle down and get off the boat. Amen. Don't just sit there and go down with the ship. Do something. Amen. Save yourself. Save your family. Begin to seek the face of God. God said he'd help us. Listen, the deal's still on. It's still on. All power has been given unto me, he said. In heaven and in the earth. Now you go. Do what I've called you to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We praise you today. God, you know every heart and every life that's in here. You know what they're facing. You know what they're up against. Some of you may be in a dark place today. Maybe your engine light's been on in your heart, in your life, your conscience. The Holy Spirit's been convicting you this week. You look yourself in the mirror. You can't lie to the man in the mirror. You can lie to everybody. You won't lie to but when you have to shave or curl your hair, you have to look at yourself. You can't lie to yourself. If you've been lying to yourself, but you hear that spirit, you hear that inside saying, listen, you know you're not right. You know it's not right. You know it's not right. Don't you let me help you with that. Won't you give that to me? Won't you give that to me? Let me help you. Won't you give it to him today? It's some type of sin. Some type of addiction. Whatever. Whatever it is that's keeping you from drawing closer to God. Won't you give it to him today? His arms are open wide. Now, today's the day of salvation. Now's the time to do it. The worship him. Make things right with him. Before it's too late. After all that's been said, I... I couldn't even call myself a gospel preacher. If I sit here and didn't give you a chance, if you're here lost today, will you come to this altar and receive Jesus? The Holy Spirit's convicted you. Your heart's beating fast right now and you don't know why. The Spirit of God's saying, you need to go. You need to move. You need to act. We've all been there, remember? The only way you get relief from that is in step of the path. And once you take that first step, I promise you, the rest of it will be so easy. And you'll be so glad to be in. God loves you today. He loves you today. He's calling you today. If you're here today and you're faithful, Sickness. You're here today. You're facing trials. You're here today. You're up against the worst battle that you've ever been in in your life. The Spirit of God saying to you, 
the deal's still on. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Because I'm going to be with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You're going to make it. You're going to make it, brother. <laughs>
Tri-Cities Church of God, where everybody is somebody, and Jesus is Lord. Praise God, praise God. Oh, thank God. I'm Lord. The deal's still on. Tell somebody the deal's still on. God's still healing. God's still saving. God's still sending revivals to nations. God's still working and He always will be working. Praise God. Father, thank you today for this great service, great mission. God, thanks. 